Hey, my loves. I have more freezer and fridge organization tips for you this week. If you missed it last week, I shared with you my storage freezer, which is in my pantry. There I store all the items I buy and I make in bulk. Now, if you want to watch that video, you can click on the card above. This refrigerator, however, is located directly across from my hob. And this is where I keep everything that I need for my day-to-day -day cooking needs. Now, prior to this, we did have an old French door fridge, but it just wasn't serving our family's needs. So we emptied it out, cleaned it carefully using just vinegar and water, because, I mean, it's food, and then we donated it. Then we replaced it with a new Samsung fridge. Now, this is a 660-litre side-by-side fridge. The wider section is the refrigerator, and the other door is the freezer. One very important function that we wanted was to have a water and ice dispenser. Having a dispenser means that we are not washing water bottles or using those plastic bo water bottles every day. And the added advantage of this particular dispenser is that you can have cubes and crushed ice with a tap of the touchpad. I have started drinking so much more water thanks to this feature. It's absolutely great. Now for the inside, let's take a look at the refrigerator first. Now these are the bins that I have been so eagerly waiting for. They come in many different widths, but in one standard length. These are by Fridgemate, and unfortunately, they are out of stock at the moment, but I will leave you a link to a similar product in the description box below. I like that these are stackable, and you also have the option of getting lids if you so wish. These bins are acrylic and therefore firm and relatively lightweight. Now back to the refrigerator. This refrigerator has four shelves, which are quite high, and I love how the stackable bins allow me to take advantage of the vertical height. Now, starting at the top, I have these two large bins stacked here. The first one is my noodle bin. My mom and I both love good noodle dishes, so I like to keep fresh noodles here while the dry ones are in the pantry. I'm using these containers, which you will see all over the fridge and even in the freezer. I bought these in a set of 20 and I will leave you the link in the description box below as well. In another box, which is slightly lower, I have some tofu. Tofu is a great source of nutrition for vegetarians. And this container holds six pieces and we, as you can see, have four left. Any other noodle ingredients I have on hand are also placed in this bin. Now under this is an identical bin, which is for my Asian spices. I have red chilies, green chilies, bird's eye chilies, which we call chili padi, galangal, and this is the most fragrant of all spices. It is known as the torch flower. I also have some lemongrass. By using a bin, I don't have to worry about where to store partly used herbs because everything just goes right back in here. I do place a lid on this box to avoid the fragrance from escaping and reserving all the goodness and aroma for the food itself. Now, this just makes cooking so much easier when you want to whip up a quick midweek meal. Next to that are these two narrow bins. Now, this one has some avocado for smoothies or for maybe toast. And below that are my mushrooms, which we can never have too much of in our house. Now, these are shiitake and these here are Swiss brown. A good tip is to wipe your mushrooms with a damp cloth just before use and not before storage. And over here, I keep my eggs in the same box as I did in my earlier fridge video. This box holds 14 eggs, which is all that we have right now. But I do have another box which sits on top if we were to buy more. Now in the second shelf, I have placed three of these shallow bins or these look more like trays actually. And in the top bin, I keep any meat that I'm thawing for the next day's meals, such as these two packets of chicken. Another tip is to always lid raw meat to avoid any cross-contamination. Below that is some apple baked ham, which I have wrapped in parchment paper. You should also put the date of purchase here so you know by when you need to use it. And it is so easy to just print it off with a label maker and stick it on. Right now the tray looks a little empty, but I have taken into account the size that I would need when I store, for example, let's say ham steaks. Further down are my cheeses. Again, once opened, I wrap these in parchment paper with the cheese type and purchase date. Now these 10 inches here are reserved for leftovers. 
since we are an extended family with people of so many preferences, it is particularly easy to have a fridge crammed with leftovers. By limiting the space, I am forced to go through the leftovers frequently, and if there is a large quantity, then we can either reserve it or pass it on to the foreign workers in our housing community who get to enjoy a home-cooked meal. Next come the vegetables. By having these lovely colourful vegetables staring at me, it makes me want to cook better and healthier food. In this bin are the lemons, carrots and cucumbers. For me, it is intuitive to keep these things together because all of them go into our side salads, which we have almost every day. Next to that are the tomatoes. And in another narrow bin are my bell peppers. I love having these gorgeous colours in my food as they encourage me to eat healthy. All right, so the bottom most shelf has my lettuce, romaine and iceberg, and also some Chinese cabbage. And next to that, in another slim bin, I like to keep stemmed vegetables, like long beans and asparagus tips. This just keeps them from getting all over the place. And cooked with finely sliced torch flour, garlic and shelled prawns, this asparagus is going to be so delicious. And next to that is the water tank, which contains the water for the dispenser. And this can be removed and refilled every couple of days. Below the four shelves are two drawers. These drawers are for the larger vegetables. So here I have some corn, greens and some leftover French beans. I still use the vegetable mesh bags I have shown you before. And these are easily washable and even bleachable if needed and are still going strong. The bottom drawer has more veggies, basically cruciferous vegetables. I have a broccoli, some cabbage and a turnip and also a box of baby spinach. Now let's move to the door. I found these lovely clear containers in a set of 20 as well. These containers fit so perfectly in here, maximizing the use of this space. Right at the very top, I keep a small amount of cashews, almonds and also walnuts. I don't use these frequently, so keeping them in the fridge extends their shelf life and helps keep them fresh. Below that are the taller jars or containers. I have some smaller veggies such as baby carrots, cherry tomatoes, both of which are so much easier to find when someone is looking for a midday snack. Another tip is to prep these things that you frequently use. In my case, this includes peeling garlic cloves and keeping them ready for use. I also do the same for ginger. Having these handy and prepped makes cooking so much faster. In the corner, I do have a tube of tomato paste, which lasts so much longer than a can because it doesn't dry out, nor does it get moldy in this packaging. Below that, at a convenient height for heavier items, are the water jugs. Now, these are Luminac jugs and we have one for pasteurized milk which we use for tea. One contains juice. And the last one here has boiled cooled water for my parents. It's so much easier to see exactly how much is left in a clear jar than it is to start shaking cartons trying to estimate the contents. Now the next shelf down houses my sauces, which I use regularly for cooking. These last longer and maintain a fresher fragrance and flavor if kept chilled. More containers with prepped condiments are also kept here. I have chopped garlic, an absolute must for any kitchen. For convenience, I also keep a spoon inside. Similarly, this container has ginger garlic paste blended with olive oil as a preservative. Right at the bottom are just some more of those rarely used items, which I try to increase the life of by keeping them chilled, such as condensed milk, cranberry sauce, and this hot sauce. Now let's move along to the freezer section. Right on top here is where I keep the deli meat. Since I do keep more than one type of deli meat on hand, I find it easy to use these stackable containers. These keep my meats together and yet individually stored. I presently have some bacon, ham and sausages. And next to that are a packet of bagels and a sourdough baguette. We keep the regular bread in a bread box for daily use, but keep the artisan breads frozen until needed. Then come my spices. Yes, I know I own way too many spices. My daughter has time and again informed me that it is a problem. But anyway, we all like cooking. We like different types of food, many cuisines, and therefore we need many different types of seasonings. Using containers in different heights, I'm able to stack seasonings, which I have in small yet varied amounts. 
My next tip is it's very important to label the seasoning and spices clearly for ease and to avoid any mistakes. Below that are more spices, but these also include blends. To maximize the vertical space, I have added a riser in here and two sets of mason jars fit perfectly one on top of another. So the bottom row is for meat dishes, while the top one is for vegetarian cooking. The one thing that I have done is to change the lids of the mason jars to plastic ones. This is to avoid rusting. I got a set of 20 from Amazon and I'm so proud of my purchase. While on the note of spices, I also often have leftover herbs from dishes that I have made. And I just chop these herbs finely and then freeze them with some olive oil. This is fresh rosemary and this is spring onion. I do the same for basil leaves, but I drizzle coconut oil as it complements Thai cooking better. I use the silicon ice tray with a lid for this purpose. The cubes pop out so easily once loosened with a butter knife. I also have a second ice tray for my homemade spice paste or masala for curries. It is just so much easier to make a batch and freeze them in cubes than to make them from scratch each time I want to make a curry. Another thing I highly recommend is freezer meals. I vary between assembled pies and pastas for those days when I am not able to cook. It is just so convenient to defrost the food and then pop it into the oven for dinner while I do whatever else I need to do. Now, IKEA has got these freezer to oven dishes, which come with tight lids in the 365 Plus series. These come in many sizes and can therefore be used for family meals as well as for smaller portions. One of my favorite freezer meals is lasagna. I use instant lasagna, which does not need to be boiled beforehand, and make my regular chunky red sauce to make it less heavy, and this definitely makes it more healthy. I also use homemade paneer or cottage cheese instead of ricotta cheese. Making it vegetarian is just a matter of omitting the meat while assembling, which I cook separately anyway. It's so easy when you're making something like lasagna or a casserole to just double the recipe and freeze one portion for later. I will leave you the link to the full recipe in the description box below. Besides this, I also usually keep some marinated meat and poultry in the freezer. Here I have chicken breast marinated in a rosemary marinade and I also have tenderloin which I have marinated with a dry rub. Both these recipes are available on my blog. Again, it's always a good idea to label it to ensure you know when you prepped it. Having these prep meals makes it so much easier to have good food choices like adding some meat or poultry to your salad or even a grilled meat with your rice and vegetables. Now below that are the drawers which I'm able to keep packets of food such as steamed veggies which goes so well with ready-made cheese sauce which is another quick fix when needed. I also recently bought these hash brown fries which I'm quite excited to try. And we buy these McCain roast potatoes which are so convenient to make and taste really good. And lastly, I just have a new bag of baby peas here. In the last drawer, I have my flatbreads, stuffed chapatis along with different flavored naans and a packet of spring roll wrappers. On the door is the mechanism of the dispenser where the ice gets stored and below that are just some large mason jars with garam masala, pomegranate powder and fennel seeds. And that's everything I have in my fridge and freezer. I really hope, my loves, that you have enjoyed it as much as I have enjoyed setting up my new fridge. The system has been working great for me and my family and has really simplified cooking. I hope it's given you some ideas on how you can set up your fridge as well. Remember, the key is to organize and prep for your own convenience. Do what you need to do to make it easier to cook healthy meals. Until the next video, this is Ravina saying happy homemaking.